I guess life has been horrid the last three years. It's gotten a little better within the last year, but. So with that being said, who is Sean Williams to you? A predator. A dangerous evil monster predator. Investigators say those hard drives contained images and video of 52 women allegedly being sexually assaulted by a man they identified as Sean Williams. Both described the victims coming up to Williams' apartment. The 2019 victim told investigators she drank an alcoholic beverage from Williams, felt lethargic, and blacked out. They say those drives also contained thousands of images of child pornography, sexually assaulting children as young as a year old. Protesters demanded accountability from Johnson City Police. Western Carolina University Police found several digital storage devices in Williams's car, which contained videos and photos of 52 women allegedly being sexually assaulted by Williams at his downtown Johnson City apartment. The affidavit says the assaults occurred while the women were unconscious. 5,000 images of child pornography. The hard drives contained file folders named after victims. She survived a five-story fall from Sean Williams's downtown Johnson City apartment. Apartment. Former Johnson City business owner and a downtown resident who was a federal fugitive for more than a year is now being held without bond on a federal retainer. New details tonight in the manhunt for an escaped inmate out of Greene County got out of his restraints, kicked out the back window of the transport van and ran. We're now learning that the transport team found a paper clip near where Williams was seated and say he may have used that to free himself. I had a, my, my mother and my stepfather. Um, my dad wasn't really around. I had a hard life because of that, and um, when I was 22, I had a kid. Um, he hasn't been in his life, so that's been hard for me and him both, um, especially the things he says about his dad, because yeah, I know where he's coming from. Um, I've had those thoughts too, but uh, my life, I guess, wasn't too bad. I mean, I've had a lot of different things happen. I mean, a lot more than what I just said, but. Um, so how did you meet Sean Williams? Um, I went to gather a friend of mine and bring him back to where we were at that night. And um, I ended up outside of his garage on Buffalo Street that is now back aware. Um, they had strobe lights going and a girl was swinging on a swing. I, was, I told my buddy, I said, well, that looks fun. He's, and then I heard a voice say, well, come on in. And I told him, I just kind of felt sketch. And I was like, eh. he's like, come on, it'll be all right, blah, blah, blah. So we went in and um, I started swinging. He, he put his hands on my shoulders. I had like a tube top dress on. So he put his hands on my bare skin and pushed me in a circle three times. And then I started feeling woozy and I told him to stop me. Um, I kind of stood up with my high heels still sitting on the swing trying to gather my whoo. A couple minutes later, I guess we had a conversation. The detective told me he watched us on camera and me and Sean were apparently talking. He pointed up and we looked up and he said he assumed he was talking about his apartment. I walked over to my friend, uh, said something to him and then all three of us left and within six minutes, I went out his apartment window. Within six minutes? Yes. So do you remember like what happened? Like, no. Up to that? I don't remember walking down the street, going up the elevator or into his apartment or anything. So, My friend said he was helping me walk down the street because I was really messed, messed up. But when you watch the, uh, me coming off the elevator at his apartment, I'm walking just fine by myself. Would you think uh, Sean Williams had anything to do with that? I sure do. Um, I think he date raped me somewhere along the way. Him and I apparently started arguing from witnesses, a statement, several witnesses. And then um, one boy uh, states that he seen him push me out of a window. Wow. Well, they state that I fell it from if you count one, two, three, four, five, not the very top one, but the one down, I fell out of the second window over, but I believe I fell out of this third window. And I landed here. My head was laying, my head was here, 
and my feet were this way. They had to um, splint my arm and do a few other things before they could even put me in the ambulance because my arm was just dangling freely. Like I said, you don't remember anything up until you got to the point where you were going to the hospital? No, I don't remember up until three weeks after being in the hospital. Yeah, you can't really tell that it's that high up, but um, I live because of the grace of God and everybody's prayers and people thinking about me if they didn't pray. I mean, all that. It, God listened to everybody that was talking to him. When, did, when was it that you found out about, you know, the placement where you were laying? Um, a couple months ago. How, how did you figure that out? I seen crime scene photos and then after I um, seen those, I went back and watched my Snapchat video that somebody was so kind to video of me that night. Right, and what did that video consist of? Me laying on the ground, wheezing, and I paused it and screenshotted where I was laying and come back here and laid on the ground to look up. Push you out of the window? Uh, maybe I threatened to tell on him, exposed him. I don't know, maybe I fought him off. He didn't like that. Right, yeah. When all this went down, were you like scared to come out with your side of the story? At first, yeah, I was trying to collect my facts before I really said anything and nobody would really help me. They wouldn't give me information. Um, so I had to pretty much do a background check on this person. I, and the bad thing is I only checked one state, which was here. And of course, <laughs> there's not a lot of criminal activity here. Right. Why do you think, you know, he does what he does? And like, how do you think he gets away with it so easy? I, I'm not really sure, but I think that people are in his pocket and helping him out. And there's all kinds of people that seem to be helping him, even like women. How does that make you feel? And that breaks my heart. I mean, it breaks my heart that anybody would help somebody be able to do these acts, let alone a woman bringing people in to. Do you have a message to anybody out there who potentially is a victim of Sean's, you know, alleged crimes? I'm so sorry that this happened to you because you didn't deserve it. Nobody does. And I hope you all get justice for what he's done to you and hopefully uh, he will be found again because now he's on the run again. Right. Uh, I'm numb, I'm, I'm angry, a lot of questions. Right, yeah. <laughs> Which I think a lot of the public have a lot of questions because I've read on different posts people's comments of how and why and this and that and there's no way that he could do this and that, blah, blah, blah. Right, yeah, the, I mean it's allegedly he got out with the paper clip. So yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, whoever makes handcuffs and shackles is about to make a lot of money because they're going to have to advance their their equipment to keep somebody obviously prisoned. Yeah, I mean, if they can break out with a paper clip. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're very right. I mean, that's, never, that's almost unheard of, especially in this day and age. So. I mean, I, like I've read comments, it's like a 50s movie or something that you're watching, like this is unheard of, impossible. And then supposedly he busted out the back window, but nobody heard him, nobody, they didn't even realize it until supposedly they got to Greenville that he he was even missing. Like you drove like, a, what, I think an hour and a half and you didn't even check on your prisoner the whole time. Right. Does it seem a little fishy to you? I definitely. Do you think that uh, he potentially had help? Maybe. Right. Um, do you believe any real justice will be served for any of the victims, including yourself? I hope so. Right. Um, at this point, I'm not real sure. Like I said, we got to catch him again. Right. If we catch him again, then at that point, hopefully everybody can get justice. And um, my word to the public, please don't kill him. Um, we need him alive, including the marshals have orders to bring him in alive. Um, I would assume if somebody of the law or anybody else shoots him and say he kills him, they will be prosecuted for murder at that point. Right, yeah, 100%. Um, what would you like to see, you know, in the form of justice when it comes to what they do with him and, you know, what the victims would get? 
I feel like he'll get life in prison without parole, well, I'm sure. But to the victims, I mean, I hope they get whatever they're looking for and they definitely get peace and um, get to be able to sleep at night and stuff without worry. When information came out about Sean Williams' case, I immediately had to find out who this man was. A lot of people speculate that because of the fact he was able to go on the run for so long, and that he always seemed to escape the police at just the right time, that Sean Williams had some sort of inside help. Accusation after accusation of sexual assaults, and he was able to live freely in Johnson City without anything happening. Sean Williams' case should have been national news way before he escaped. His name should have been released to the public way before I made a TikTok about him. Over 50 confirmed victims of sexual assaults. Two are children, and there are rumors that more of his victims are minors. The Johnson City Police Force did the absolute bare minimum in this case, which is why they were found negligent in a lawsuit on how they handled the case. They failed to protect women and children. Since the incident, how and uh, what has your healing process been like? My healing process has been really difficult. Um, now I'm just judging mentally. Um, and to be honest with you, I was actually starting to do good until he escaped, so. What were like the uh, repercussions of, you know, you falling out of the window? I mean, I like I learning how to walk again. Um, I had to learn how to use the bathroom by myself, shower by myself, um, drop my car again. Um, months and hours of physical therapy and occupational therapy to help with my hand, my arm, my legs. Life has been difficult, but not as difficult as some. When, when you did come forward, uh, how did the justice system treat you? I had a hard time getting police reports, accident reports of myself. I contacted the detective over my case. Um, he didn't answer. Well, then Sergeant Peters called me back and gave me what I needed. And then the next day, the city attorney called me and told me that if I needed to reference the detective or anybody else in my case that I needed to contact her first. Do you have, you know, any final words to the people out there that may be watching this? We are having a benefit to help some local charities up here in John City that are helping the victims. Um, we're having it on October the 28th from 8 to 3 a.m. at Crazy Chicken in Kingsport. Uh, this is a benefit, anything raised or brought will be given to all three charities divided equally. Of course, they um, do accept cash donations so they can buy the things that they may need. And we are accepting like pads, penny liners, tampons, things like that. Uh, you can also follow my page and see the event. You can, you can let them know your page. Uh, yeah, my page is Michaela Evans with M-I and then Kayla, my Kayla. <laughs> um, and then my business page is Speak Up, Speak Out. Um, that way, if you have anything you need to tell, even if you was, say, five years old and you were raped or molested and you want to tell that story to somebody and maybe help your conscience some, uh, where I'm listening and I'm willing to help in any way I can. If you need help, I will, uh, like, say, if you're in a domestic violence situation or anything like that, if I can't help you, then I will refer you to somebody that I know can. Um, I have several people that I know that can help. I do also have like a resources page. Um, I do need to post that so people can see too. Um, there are a, pe a few people on there that they can list as resources like the Child Advocacy Center and um, Safe House. They are in Kingsport and John City, but they do help local people around the different cities like Rogersville, Churchill, things like that. If, you know, say someone like Sean Williams was watching, do you have any words? I hope they catch you soon because they all need you to prosecute. But I have a feeling just deep down in my heart that he, he'll be caught and hopefully it's soon.